Kia ora, and today I am here giving a first impressions on the Jackson's watercolour line. Um, I've got six tubes here, this is from the starter set um, available on Jackson's. Um, I bought it on special for $54 um, New Zealand, and you get a lot of paint for that, so um, that racks up just over ten dollars per tube and they are 21 milliliters of professional watercolor so that is quite good it usually runs about 75 dollars um, new zealand for this set um, in the set it didn't come in a box it just came with the tubes in a like in the package scent um, so there were a little few rips like this is undone there was a rip it was stuck to here and then there was a rip on here so now this is um, a little damage but no spillings of the actual paint which is the main thing um, and then there are two different types of tubes here as you may see I assume one is the old version one is the new version um, I don't know what one's what but I hope this is the new version because it's got the pigment information on the front as well as all the granulation transparency um, light fastness information on the front here which is quite good um, and then whereas this one is it's got the swatch and the color name and then all the information on the back here so I'm not sure what way um, it is um, going <laughs> moving on um, the colors in the set is um, Jackson's yellow light um, permanent alizarin and crimson um, ultramarine deep Permanent Sap Green, Raw Sienna, and Payne's Grey. I'll go through the pigments as I swatch them out. Um, but I've got a... I've dried them out just over one day. So I'll be using them in here um, just to see how well they re-wet. Um, I'll swatch on camera with you guys. Um, and then we've got a painting to do as well. Okay, so we are starting with... Um, Jackson's Yellow, which is PY1154, um, one and we're just doing a light watered down layer to start off with, and then we will do a, um, a thicker line to see how opaque it is, and um, how well it layers. So far, very easy to re-wet. I did only let them dry for one day, so... Um, that might play something into it. Um, the next colour I'll swatch is the Raw Sienna, um, which is PBR7. And it's just so it doesn't bleed into the other colours. This one says it does granulate, so I'm leaving lot of water in it to see um, what the granulation is like but so far very subtle brown and the last color I'll swatch before letting them dry is the ultramarine deep which is P, um, PB29 which is pretty standard for ultramarine and I will again let a lot of water here just to see the granulation because ultramarine is very standard for granulating. There were bigger sets and there were also half pan sets available um, on Jackson's website so if a tube set isn't quite what you're looking for um, there are half pan sets and stuff. Um, the reason I got the tubes is because I can pour them into half pans and it is a quite good way to try to test a set with the standard colors um, just to see if they can do that right they can do most colors right is um, how I go about it so um, I'll let this dry and then I'll do the next swatches and then we can start the painting okay so the three that I've painted have dried out so we'll be doing the next three so um, the next colour I'll be swatching is the Permanent Alizarin Crimson Deep, which is PR206. This is looking like quite a brown red, um, which will make it interesting 
for mixing um, clean purples. Um, yeah, it's definitely looking more like a brown leaning colour. Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> There we go. And then I'll be swatching the Permanent Sap Green, which is two pigments. It is PB29 and PY140, uh, 154. So these two colors right here mixed together, which is pretty funny. Um, you'd kind of hope for a different convenient color, especially if you've got both pigments already here. And I, if I mix these two colors I get this exact green but um is what it is I suppose <laughs> just a you know standard green and then the last color is the Payne's gray which is three pigments so it is PBK7 PB19 and PB15 colon 1 which I'm pretty sure is a very similar mixture from the Sennelier Payne's Grey that I swatched on the channel not too long ago. I could be wrong, however. So I'll be leaving them to dry and I'll do some extra layers over top of these I'll do that off camera and um, I'll start painting on camera but um, I'll probably do most of the painting off camera so this video isn't extremely long for you guys okay so I've swatched the second layer over top of these colors here you can see the yellow is a little bit opaque um, but that's all right um, while the other three colors dry I'll be doing a painting just little landscape with some flowers in it so nothing too crazy <laughs> I've got a little mixing area here so um, should get an interesting color palette thing going on <laughs> um, lots of colors mixing together kind of um, but yeah I'm using 100% cotton paper by the way it's 300 GSM which is thicker than usual um, the usual paper I use, but um, I don't quite like this format because it is spine bound and I, the peg isn't doing much, but it doesn't like opening flat like this. Um, and I do have, you know, issues with that. I thought I would give you guys a closer update just on how it's going. Done, doing the first layer at the moment of the painting and then I've got these swatches here. You can see very faint granulation in some of the colours. Um, and you can definitely see the color separation here in the sap green so that's all at the moment I'll keep you updated okay here we are again this is just an update closer up again um, you can see I've been struggling to get a nice purple with the red provided you can see here the swatches again with the lines over the other colors now too um, you can definitely see these ones are quite opaque and you can see where the line is over the top of the black which isn't great it means it's got some stuff in it to um, make that line um, cover the line anyway um, but so far they're not great to layer and having a little bit of trouble with that um, and yeah definitely struggling with not being able to mix that nice purple I'm wanting I thought I would do the last little bit on camera, which is just the sky and the sea. Um, I've just been using this <laughs> mixing area this whole time, which is a little limiting, but it makes it quite interesting nonetheless. Um, yeah, no, it's been interesting using the set. I wouldn't recommend it um, if it's your you know you're wanting your first set of watercolors um definitely just because of the red um 
a few other factors but mainly the red is so limiting um, compared to just a proper cool red um, you get in you usually get in sets um, it's just not worth it I don't think just because um, you really can't mix your proper purples especially if you want to like give mixing purples a go or like for flowers and cool reds are just so versatile in what you can use them for um, and they mix some beautiful greys with the right greens as well um, so yeah definitely just a limiting factor there um, and then it is nice having the black but it makes you know life easier um, mixing blacks um, takes a bit of time to get used to the practice and colour combinations and stuff and sometimes you just want to have it already in the set um, so that is that could be a plus to you um, the, the paint itself um, I can't tell if I like it or not um, I also noticed when trying to layer up the colours especially here you can see kind of muddies up which um, isn't good it kind of looks unappealing and makes it quite difficult um, especially if you're not used to watercolors you know you just want to have fun with it rather than worry about this um, quite a few of the colors are showing up on this black line which is not helpful again beginner set um, it means you can't get your clean um, beautiful colors um, they don't look as vibrant they it's not a fun time really um, but you know it is what it is um, the paints themselves though are fine to use definitely not my favorites um, they will be <laughs> used nonetheless um, I'll put them in my travel set and stuff they'll easily be used but um, won't be something I gravitate towards um, like the Roman Schmall Roman Schmall was like half the price and you know minus the tube part that's a little bit impractical um, only being in full pans but it is just a much nicer process and beautiful beautiful colors in that set um, so if you're wanting a starter set definitely try that one and um, it's much more affordable as well Jackson watercolors they're nice but um, I'd only recommend them if they're the most affordable thing and you've already got like a solid set um, and it's you're just wanting to try these paints out like they're fine for trying out paints and using and stuff but um, definitely not the best one out there um, that is just my first impression I might ch yeah so um, might change my mind I might love this set but overall that's just the opinions of, at the moment so thank you guys for watching